where do you live, John? 20 Wall Street, Hoosick Falls. I see. Have you lived in Hoosick Falls? All my life. All your life. Okay. Why don't you tell us a little about before you went into the service? Well, before I went into the service, I worked at Noble Woods Machine Company for a short while. And then from there, I went to work at the Water Bleed Arsenal. And I worked at the Water Bleed Arsenal to I was put into uh, classif classification A for the draft. So I didn't want to go into the Army. So I just went, went over to the recruiting office over in, in uh, Albany to see if I could join the Navy. I went over there and happened to be a chief over there by the name of Sullivan, his name was. And he also was on the draft board here in Hoosick Falls. So I told him I want to do it, and he said, where do you work? And I said, the Ark, Mr. Sullivan. Oh. He said, I can't take you. I said, why? He says, because you work in the arsenal, it's a defense job, I can't do it. I said, well, you just got through classifying me in 1A. He said, I was subject to the draft. So he said, well, you have to get a discharge from your colonel that's over at the arsenal. So I'm back, and I was muttering, so I was working on night shift at the arsenal. I talked to my superintendent there, he said, you want to go to the Navy? I said, yeah. You go upstairs and, at 8 o'clock and uh, tell them you're resigning from the arsenal. So they got to take a resignation as long as you're going to go in the service. So I just did, I did that. So I went back and I went back over to the recruit office and she says, well, in that case, yes. We'll take it. So I did. That was in October of 42. So I went in the Navy. Well, before that, did you, did you go to uh, St. Mary's or Academy? Well, I went to St. Mary's Academy. And you graduated and uh, you went to school there? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I went to school at St. Mary's. And uh, in fact, they graduated in 1936, but at that time we were the biggest class out of St. Mary's. And, uh, All right, so now, I'm sorry, I didn't interrupt you, but yeah. I want you to go back. Now you you went to back to the enlisted, to yeah, enlisted back, the Navy. Well, back in... Uh, enlisted, it was in October, I think it was the 15th of October, 1942, and there was another guy from who's it for, it was Sonny, uh, oh, the father was a electrician, I can't think of his name, well, that's right. was two of us from who's it Falls. we were the first company into Samson at that time, but Samson just, just over, oh. and uh, when they were there for 12 weeks, and after that, uh, I was assigned to a machinist mate school out in Great Lakes, Illinois. I had 16 weeks out there. And from there, I graduated, and I had pretty good honors, because I graduated as second class machinist up from the school. And uh, then I was assigned to an optical school in Norfolk Navy Yard. And uh, that actually was over in Plymouth, which is across the Things to Charles River down there and across the river, right in the Navy Yard. They had a big optical shop there, and that's where there was about 14 of us were going to school there to learn about optics and guns, gun sight telescopes, anything that optical that the Navy used. We would repair them and do things like that, clean them. So I went through there and got through with that, and uh, then I was assigned to the, the repair ship. To, the Mark, USS Markab, which is AD-21, it's a, it's a destroyer tender, which has a, a, a series or a squadron of uh, destroyers assigned to it that they service. They supply them with water, fuel, food, do any repairs that has to be done, which can be done out. out, out. We're just a big floating machine shop. That's what it actually was. I see. And uh, we had a... I think there was 900 people aboard that ship. It was quite a large ship. And from there, the first we got signed there, then I took a good land trip. From there, I was signed there. When I first had to go to uh, Treasure Island in, Long, or in San Francisco, stood there for a couple of weeks, was on the shore patrol. Then he signed me up to Riverton, Washington, up to the Navy Yard up there. I was up there for a couple of weeks, and then I caught a uh, transport up to the Aleutians where I was went aboard my ship, the AD-21 Marcap. That was right at the, in Adak, one of the Aleutian Islands. Boy, that was a desolate place. I wouldn't <laughs> want anybody to be stationed there. 
Well, anyway, I went aboard ship, and it was exactly on the Christmas Eve. In 43, I went aboard the, the Marcat. From there, we come back to the States. Uh, I was only aboard ship, I think, about a month, or, no, about two months, it was in February. We come back to the States. We went through an awful storm and had to do a lot of repair work. And uh, while, uh, while I was in, uh, in uh, San Francisco, uh, I got a notice from the Red Cross that my mother had a severe uh, stroke. So I did get time to get, get home. But that was just <laughs> got as far as Wichita Falls in the, in the plane. In the, Big snowstorm grounded us and take the rest of the way by train. And my my sister was a nurse at uh, St. Mary's Hospital in Amsterdam, and that's where she had to have my mother. So I stood there for three, four days, and I had to go back to ship with her ship and ride out again. So from there we went back out to uh, Hawaii, out to Pearl Harbor, stood there for a month. From there we went out to uh, Majuro, which is one of the uh, Marshall Islands, Anahuitac and Kalajalan, and there we serviced the, the fleet. And while we were there, I remember that the big fleet came in with transports, and that was the time that the, the company from here were going over to the Saipan. Saipan, Saipan and, uh, you know. Yeah, the 105th. Uh, yeah. And, then, and from there, we went on to the, the Carolyn Islands, to Ulithi there for two or three months and from there we got ready there to service the ship they were going to invade the Philippines so from there we went into the Philippines after they were invaded and went into Lake the Gulf right there at, the, at Luzon and Samar we were there till the, the war ended but the, while we were there I met, met two, uh, two old buddies from Hoosick Falls one was Frank Driscoll he came aboard the ship at the middle of the night to get all this gear that they were shipping out. Because that was where they were going into our, their ship was going to attack that, the Okinawa. And, uh, and uh, later on, after the war ended, just a few days before that, the war ended, uh, Jim Casey from aboard ship. He was from aboard to go to church to, to, go, to go have Catholic Mass aboard our ship. But we, got to get, we, never, we never did get the Mass that day. Anyway, that was uh, after that uh, the war ended. All right, well, let's talk a little about, in other words, like uh, the battle, uh, a big sea battle, then you would have to fix the ships and oh, do yeah, whatever yeah, repairs yeah, you yeah. could. Well, one thing I remember, it wasn't, it wasn't a nice thing to see, but I remember when the, the uh, aircraft carrier Franklin got, got sunk, and a lot of their the survivors from that came aboard our ship and it was made you almost cry to, to hear one guy holler to other, do you know where this guy is? Do you know where that guy yeah, is? They were, yeah. they sure. lost track of their own buddies, you know. Yeah, because they all, you that know. Was, that, was just, that was sad. Yeah. So that was your job then. You were keeping those the destroyers going. That's right. So they could uh, bombard and do the that's things they had to do. do. Whatever they did, why we were kept them supplied. So that was only sometimes we did. The uh, cruisers came in. We had we fixed them up too. I see. There was one ship that lost their mast. Uh, it's made out of wood. Well, we made them one right there of the ocean. They were mad at us because they figured they're going back <laughs> to the so states. Back to the states where they could repair, but they did. So, so that ship must have been quite a machine shop. It was. It was a floating machine shop. They did everything. They didn't have a foundry aboard ship. They did yeah. like, just about anything you wanted. That's we had great. a big uh, torpedo room, we fixed up torpedoes and all that. It was a big repair ship. Right. That's interesting. All right, now, you, the war's over. Yeah, and I, I, it, That was September of 45, they yeah. signed the peace. Well, in, uh, then again in October of 45, it was late in October, uh, I got my discharge papers. I was going to return to the States, so I had to go over to uh, Samar. Otak Lobin, that's the name of the place, over on, on Lady Gulf there. And from there I caught a transport back to the, back to the States. And uh, we turned back into uh, Portland, Oregon. Come up the Columbia River and into Portland. 
There it went by train transport to, into, to the Lido Beach over on Long Island. That's where it was discharged from. I see. All right. Then what happened? You, I noticed, I read somewhere that you were in the reserve. I mean, did well, they... I, I, but I knew it and call back, so... I see. You you had to stay in the reserve. Yeah. Yeah, I, I had to stay in four years, years yeah. too, after. But uh, I didn't have to go back in again. All right. But then I come back and uh, I went to work in uh, Noble Wood. Noble Wood? Back, back in Noble Wood. Were you uh, married while you were in the service, or did no, you get after married I got, after the service? I got married in the 46. In 46. In, uh, May of 1946. Married before Melma, she was on the roll, and I married her. And we had three children. Where are your children now? Well, one is in the, the oldest one is in Texas. She works for GTE. She's got a real good job with them. Uh, Mary Lou, she's over in Waterford. She works for some uh, some employment agency out there. She got a good job. And then Joni, she's uh, over in uh, Albany. And my three daughters. Wow. And I have uh, six grandchildren and one great grandchild. Great. All right, so you went to work for Noble Wood. Yes, I worked there until they closed. I see. So, in other words, that you stayed right with them yeah, in the yeah, machine yeah. shops there. Yeah, I worked at the I became foreman there. When they closed up, I was a foreman there. And from there, I went to Oak Industries. And uh, that's when they bought out this tri-point down on Long Island. And the three of us went down there to learn uh, how to machine Teflon, because that, that was what, what that tri-point yeah. did. They worked with Teflon. Right. And they come down there for a few weeks, then come back here and opened up the, the plant here in Hoosier Falls. And we worked, worked there to well, the Oak Industries was bought out by uh, have right Signal. And I worked there till I till you retired. Retired. I see. And and uh, is there anything else? I mean, that's an interesting story. We told, learned about your family. What else uh, can you tell us about Hoosick Falls? Oh, yeah. the one thing that, like the house where I live in right now was built by uh, by Jim Miller. Was in fact uh, the Miller Hose Company was named after him. That's where the Polish Hall is today. That was the Miller Hose Company. Well, when they were building the, the, the high school, the, the Walter Wood Mansion there, yeah. well, they tore down part of the library, part of the mansion part, and uh, Jim was building the house where I live in now, yeah. and I got uh, the fireplace and stained glass window came out of there and French doors. Oh, they all came out of that. And they're all in your house. They're in the house right now. So yeah. Real historic. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Well, is, uh, if, is there anything else you'd like to say? No, uh, record? Uh, you told a great story, and we appreciate it. Thank you very much. Okay, Phil.